Okay, uh, so, so here let's uh, analyze the accuracy of this by performing a Taylor series analysis. So u of i plus 1, if you expand using Taylor series, that's ui, right? That's a first order approximation of ui plus 1 is ui. And the first order correction, which gives you a second order approximation, would be plus delta x times the first order derivative of u at grid point i. There is going to be a second order error, which is plus half of delta x squared times the second order derivative at i. Right? And you should expand uh, further because here we are actually trying to approximate the second order derivative here. So to show that it is second order, we have to at least expand beyond this point, right? So if we expand towards here, we can only show its first order, right? So basically, we need to have this term cancelled in order for the scheme to be second order because this is the term that, this is the first term that shouldn't cancel. We should get the second order derivative, right? Okay, so then there is a four factorial term, delta x to the fourth power times the fourth order derivative at i. And for the remaining, we just say delta x to the fifth power. So this is probably the longest Taylor series expansion we have done in this class so far, right? Okay, and the ui is just equal to ui. All the rest of the terms are zero. And ui minus one is equal to ui so for all the odd terms, we take negative, and for the even terms, we have plus, we have minus, plus, and everything else is the same as the, as the first equation, right? Okay, so now, remember we have a minus 2 here. The midpoint is minus 2, so let's have a minus 2 over here, so we... Uh, because the rest is zero, we don't have to do anything. And now we add them together, right? We add is equal to, this gets canceled as it should, okay? There is a plus minus gets canceled and every odd term is canceled, right? As, as long as we have a plus minus, we get canceled. The first term as expected not to be canceled is this term. So we have half delta x squared and half delta x squared. We get a delta x squared times the second order derivative. And uh, this is exactly why we are dividing by delta x squared. Okay? And then this term, uh, the 2, 1, 24th gets combined to a 12th. And the leading error in this scheme is going to be proportional to the fourth order derivative of u. Again, this is uh, the, the leading error being proportional to some high order derivative of u is one of the primary reasons finite difference is not suitable for any solution that has sharp discontinuities or, or even solutions that doesn't even have sharp discontinuity. Anything that has a non-smooth behavior, finite difference can be pretty bad. So for example, even if you don't have shock waves, uh, you may have discontinuities in the gradient. Okay, for example, if you are solving multi-phase flows, that's one of the problems where at the interface of your, for example, well, if you are doing liquid rocket combustion, you have, uh, you have the liquid fuel and uh, you have a uh, gaseous content, right? So basically the mixture of uh, vapor and uh, air, or oh, uh, maybe. Uh, so uh, so it, it, the, on the interface, on the liquid gas interface, the fluids have very different viscosities, right? So even if the stress is continuous, the velocity gradient will be discontinuous. And if you use finite difference to solve this kind of problems, what is that guy? What is the fourth order derivative of velocity at the interface? It's practically infinite, right? So 
you wouldn't expect you'll find a different scheme, particularly for second uh, for for second order derivatives to work at the interfaces. You somehow need to figure out better ways to deal with that. Okay, it turns out finite volume actually works, and finite element actually works even better for for uh, problems with uh, discontinuous properties. Therefore, solutions can be discontinuous, or the derivative of solution is discontinuous. But anyway, so let's uh, we are studying finite difference now. We can solve any equations as long as the coefficients of the equations are actually smooth, right? If you have coefficient discontinuities, uh, finite difference is not very good. So okay, so we add them up, and uh, if you have this divided by uh, delta x square, we recover the second order derivative plus a delta x square because we have delta x fourth divided by delta x square. We have a uh, twelfth of delta x square times the fourth order derivative. As long as the fourth order derivative is not huge, because we are multiplying by delta x square over twelve which is often a very small number, we get very accurate approximations to the second order derivative. All right. So, so this, is a, a, this is basically the standard way to analyze accuracy of finite difference methods. Very easy, right? Just uh, plugging everything into Taylor series and you come up with uh, whatever residual term you get which determines the accuracy.